13th of May. The, uh, the usual gardening weather's come back. Uh, it's stopped raining now, but it's cloudy. It's a bit windy. I was kind of hoping to wait for this wind to die back a bit because I need to um, get my tomatoes actually planted into the polytunnel. So it means I've got to empty a lot of stuff out and I was a bit worried about things getting damaged. So I'm going to try and uh, not bring my tomatoes out if I can help it. I've got a couple that are in pots that I'll have to bring out, but they're anchored to a cane, so they've got some support. The only place I've got that's really sheltered, I've got a little pocket down here, and um, probably by the compost heap. Um, just stop an excessive hit, you know, by the winds, could make things topple or break the stem. So, uh, fingers crossed, everything will go all right. I need to get the shelf sort of put outside into its drying rack. I'll probably use that for seedlings until the um, onions are ready and the garlic. So, uh, might as well finish my brew and uh, make a start. So, uh, these tomato plants are desperate now. Um, there's a couple of them that are touching the actual top over here. So they're on the shelf, this shelf has to come out. Um, the smart plants can go underneath it for now if need be, but I'd rather kind of get this all done in, um, in one go sort of thing. So there's loads of plants and bits of trays in here. There's a tray down the bottom here with some, uh, you know, there was a few tomato plants I didn't need. And just basically stuff with a compost heap in there. So some mammoth onions, um, things like that I can kind of put in the, in the walkway. Because uh, currently in the walkway I've got four 12 litre pots at the moment with uh, Cause yet, I planted these in the other day, same sort of way as I did my tomatoes. You know, I made the, the sort of pre made pothole. And the thing is, because I'm running short on compost, I've actually used my own. It's not fully ready, but I put it through a, a real kind of coarse sieve. Um, and it's a bit of a test, really. So, I'm going to put a couple in the ground up the top, you know, which is had manure put on top of it, and just, just see it. It's good to know how your own compost, you know, is doing. Um, like I say, the only thing is with this is it's it's kind of like worm cast compost, if you know what I mean. So it can hold a fair bit of the water, you know, and uh, there's still worms and a little rove beetle roaming around there. So I just hope they leave it alone and uh, and they can carry on doing the composting around it. And um, it'll just grow fine. I think 12 litres big enough for a courgette. It'll need some water though know, when it's in production because courgettes being courgettes, they, uh, they don't half hammer the veg out. So, uh, so I have seedlings in here and um, my corn, my uh, French climbing beans, some leftover garlic still. So uh, just kind of keeping that there until I find it. If I've got a little gap, I'll shove it in. So I need to try and empty all this out and just leave these tomato plants in. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time and you just got to be careful not to damage things. and. There's a few things with canes on, I just need to know, make sure I don't spike all in polytunnel. Um, so I guess we'll just get on with that. First thing though, get these core jets out, because they're right in the path. I'm just hoping uh, they don't get knocked about. So they're not going to stay in the polytunnel, so they are inevitably going to get wafted about, depending on where I grow them. Um, but it just gives a bit of time for the stem to firm up, and I'll probably have to put some little supports in, you know, because you can put a couple of canes around the central stem to try and grow, grow them sort of semi-vertically. The other thing I did put in these pots was uh, probably about half inch of manure at the bottom, just to stop all the compost from falling through the holes. I didn't, know whether this, I didn't want to do them in 30 litre tubs because it's a bit big plus I've only got a couple knocking around so I had some 12 litres which is what I used to grow my peppers in but my peppers have been potted on now and they're in um, 7.5 litre pots I've got some of them and my uh, patches I think are in uh, 5 litre pots so plenty to do I just nearly stabbed a hole in my polytunnel 
So these are just some uh, seeds taken from a supermarket, tomato called piccolo. Um, needs de suckering, I'll deal with that later on. They're probably going to go in the polytunnel right by the back door because I don't really open the back door. There's no point really because I'll just be walking straight into the manure heap. But it's got netting in the door so it'll let some ventilation through. Just need to be careful now, watch what I'm doing. But, uh, it's a job that needs doing, and to be honest, it's uh, it's better than tomato plants getting now because uh, they are sort of running a little on the dry side. Um, so the few of them that'll probably start, the leaves will start dropping. But if I get them in today, give them a water and a feed, and then it's kind of uh, they're on their own from that really. I've just got some seed trays in here, I'm going to uh, just stack some things up you know, there's a bit of a tip in here at the moment but never mind got some squash Turks turban uh, I think there's three of them that are starting to kind of pop the compost at the top now I don't know if I'm going to grow them yet the idea is with them is to uh, put them down plot where the first early's come out you know I've been down to the plot I didn't film because uh, I just went down to put um, run a uh, climbing bean um, canes up so I thought well got down there and that uh, big long row of peas that I'd put in cause I took some more to put, to put in they were looking pretty um, pretty much past it to be honest I don't know what's happened. I don't think it's a disease or virus, uh, which I first saw. I thought, oh, is it that wilt or whatever it is? Um, it's just, I don't feel the roots and they're just absolutely bone dry. And I see a problem with my plot because one extreme to the other it's flooded and then it's bone dry. So I just need to uh, be careful with what, what I'm doing and keep an eye on things down there. Um, I did water when I went down and then uh, it sort of uh, see how it goes from there but uh, the old uh, parsley's coming on I'll probably just multi-plant this together in a big pot and then give some away I'm just hoping it doesn't absolutely hammer it down because not everything's in trays with holes in the bottom um, them straight away, I'm getting short on room, so I'll shut these over here. Because you're currently sat on top of the bench. <sighs> oh, I thought I'd try setting both phones up. So you know, this one's currently just propped on the end of a cane at the moment, so it might just drop off, I don't know. I'll try this bit of technical stuff. As you know, so you can see both ends of it I guess. There's a tray here, this is celery. I might try and pot this on at some point and get it as big as I can before I plant it out. Don't know where it's going to go yet. Well, I, mean, I know where it's going to go. It's going to go up to the allotment in uh, the raised bed that's currently got the spring onions and beetroot in. But I've actually put uh, a little row of peas in there. You know, my old pea nets, I had uh, some left, so I've used them. So here's the, uh, got five of these Kelsey onions, so seems a shame, but I don't know. I've, I've, I don't need any more anyway, I've got 30 up in the ground. You, know, you always kind of lose a couple, I guess, if you get a bit wet, because I don't really support them that well they kind of they get an early sowing but they have to grow grow a bit robustly on their own now we've had some rains I guess the slugs will be out I've already seen a couple of snails this morning but uh, just sort of uh, kindly dispatch them so they did come out 
and uh, give the old slugs a good popping. You know, when it was some rain, when the hot spell was here, um, to try and dent the numbers, and it has to be honest. This sweet comb, what I've done, I've put it actually on a, a rack to try and air prune the root because the roots were coming out the bottom. And I thought, well, if I can air prune it at the bottom, it encourage the roots to stay in the pot. And the knees are getting a bit dry. But uh, probably another, another two weeks. I need to separate these into like the, the biggest and the smallest. And if I've got 20, you know, because there's two sizes, you know, there's like a little tiny one and a bigger one, so kind of group them and hopefully probably keep these here till first week of June. It's a different story for the older climbing beans, I might have to split them up a bit. They're not starting to twist yet, the tops are coming through, but uh, I just don't start tangling up with each other, but I might have to separate them a little bit, just to give them a little bit more uh, growing space, and then put them out in a bit of a bit of a breeze occasionally, you know, to try and firm up, because they'll go from being in here into an open field, and they don't have to get clobbered about, so I don't think they're a, a big fan of being grown up at the allotment. So I don't so I think it's a, a patch, I think, that left over. Some uh, more French beans in there. So, dwarf French beans, because I sold some dara, a few missing, so I'll pop some more seeds in, but I've also got some more. They're alright for little, filling the gaps here and there and stuff. This is the uh, thing now. I have this little greenhouse down here because uh, I don't like having seeds in the polytunnel when it's the main season because it's just too hot. You know, and uh, I mean, I have a little double greenhouse down the bottom end. It's like a little tiny greenhouse in there. It's good in the cooler months and it's okay for seedlings, but when it gets too hot, it's. Uh, I'll lay like a fleece or a towel over it, but I'd never uh, close the door. Once it gets sort of like past the frost stage, the door never gets closed on it because uh, it doesn't take long and you can soon bake off your, uh, your ceilings. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen Nigel's video, Muddy Boots. Um, you know, it's, it happens, you forget sometimes, you know. And you, you could think, well, it's a bit cold today. You leave things kind of battened down and while you're getting on with your day, you only need an, an hour of the sun to pop out. And uh, it can frazzle everything. You know, so you, you do need to sort of allow good airflow. You know, what's the risk of frost in the past and that? It's uh, give everything a good bit of airflow. I usually get up, the door gets opened in the morning and then it stays open. Once the uh, tomatoes are actually in, the polyton will rarely ever get shut. You know, unless if you get like a real hailstone, I just have to close it sometimes to protect the plants near the front. Uh, usually it's okay. Uh, I guess I'll uh, carry on clearing up in here because it's pointless you're videoing all this bit. And then we'll get on with some uh, planting of these things. Um, you know, because if I put them outside, they're, they're fairly sturdy, but they might just get. Uh, it only takes a gust of wind to take them over at the stem. And that's a setback I could do without right now. Like I say, the only setback I've had is uh, some of my peas at the plot. A couple of the potatoes that have come through, they got the tips burnt on a little bit from the frost. And that's the problem with it being so far away, I don't get down there that often. 
you know, so I went down and initially planted everything. And I popped down once more after that. And that was it until I went the other day. You know, because it's like good soil, that. And I dug it quite late, it didn't have that settling time, so I reckon it was just full of air pockets in there. It's just not taking up the moisture. I mean, it should have plenty of organic matter in that bed, even though it seems like it doesn't. We've got to put some stuff in that bed over the years. It just doesn't seem to uh, alter it. And it's just really bad ground. So, uh, just, but it's all I've got to work with. Nice little beat of it, perfect and everything. I just can't. Right, so I'll uh, carry on doing this bit. And then we'll get on with some planting. Right, I've pretty much got everything I need out of the way to uh, to make a start anyway. Uh, I can sort this greenhouse out down this bottom end another time. Um, I thought I'd just show you how I get this shelf out. Um, it's usually pretty straightforward. Um, I say this becomes my drying rack for my onions, so I've got like a polythene cover, so it kind of comes like a mini sort of polytunnel. It's a dual purpose, so it's quite handy. Uh, if I had the space, I'd make another one for the other side, but there's just there's no real space to put it out for, you know, to, to wreck the whole thing to, to dry. I mean, I've got the patio, but it doesn't get much sun down there. Um, and usually by the end of the year, you need a bit of sunshine. So I was this little central pillar here, I'll do it from the bottom first. It's just a series of screws. You know, it's kind of remembering to keep all the screws. Because I do have a habit of... Uh, You know, when I come to put it back up, thinking, oh, where's all my screws gone? I need to find my screws to convert it in the, uh, into the, the drying rack. It has some quite long screws. But it's, pretty, it's just sat on the couple of bits of timber at each end at the front. At least the back is kind of screwed. So you have to kind of find the screws and hopefully the heads haven't gone on them. Got to take them all out bar one. You know, because otherwise uh, it'll just drop down. You know, um, one should be enough to hold it. Because uh, this is why it can be a bit risky doing plants underneath it, because uh, the shelf goes down and it'll break them. Right, so that's that about it, just one more screw and then I just simply uh, lift it out but I have to take the weight of the back you know when I undo this last screw and then sort of throw my drill out of the way drop the drill down there just get that last screw out and it should just have to be careful I don't go banging this in putting holes in polytunnel kind of just it's a bit of a snug fit Simply just uh, take it out. And then uh, I've got the full growing height left in here now. So, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll probably, I might even video that later on, you know, actually putting it together as the drying rack or the so called polytunnel for seedlings for now. Alright, so I guess we'll uh, start the planting now. Okay, well, it's time to get these tomatoes in. I'm not going to show you all of them being done because once I've done one, I do them all the same. There's nothing different. Uh, so a lot of the times I tend to do my cherries all grouped over in this bed, but um, because I've kind of got three of each cherry, I've got three Garner's Delight and three Sun Gold. And then I've got four Alicante, four Moneymaker and four San Marzano. So I thought I'm going to do three cherries, four of the Moneymaker or Alicante, and then two of the San Marzano at the end, on each side. So uh, basically the, the four end plants, on each, two on each side are gonna be the San Marzano, because they tend to be the last two um, <coughs> to sort of finish. Um, and because, you know, the, the cherries tend to get attacked quite, um, quite often, so they're sort of like, as you come in the door, especially the sun golds, because uh, everyone likes them. So, 
this is just compost i have put a little bit of manure at the bottom i'm just hoping it's not fresh or too woody that it's going to starve it in nitrogen so um i wanted to actually renew this compost this year but i've put a little blood fish and bone meal in it when i actually did the beds a couple of weeks ago i just basically took some stuff out of it and put some manure in the bottom only probably an inch or so a couple of inch so i've got some dolomite lime or you know or, or garden lime because you know calcium is very important uh, as is uh, magnesium it just helps prevent the blossom end rot but sometimes you do get it um, and it's usually a mag magnesium deficiency so epsom salts can kind of correct that so if you get some epsom salts don't go to the chemist and buy it it's absolutely fortune garden centers will buy it you know they'll, they'll sell it um, also I have small pots that I use for these holes here which is where I, I tend to water through them as much as possible and I tend to feed through the actual top of the pot. I will be trimming some of this foliage off at some point but maybe not today. Um, just want to get them in and get them over that shock and once I can see like there's a growth spur at the top they've, they've dumped new roots out you know within a week I'll be able to give these a tug and they won't come out they'll have rooted in. So we'll do um, We'll, we'll do this one first. All right, so I'm going to use a bulb planter. I usually just trail the hole out, but I've got a bulb planter somewhere in here with me. I just guess if taking the compost out, like that, get rid of that compost, and I'll get your pot. Just not, not done anything else to it, it's just got you know standard holes in the bottom of it and then just basically uh, just pop it in and then you, you water through that. I mean you can make it a little bit deeper which I will do just to make sure it's got a little gap under it. You know you can angle it towards the plants if you want. Um, but I tend, because I have a sheet on top of this it tends to be okay, it doesn't tend to dry out so bad. Um, Sometimes um, it might get dry along the edges here, so you kind of have a careful lift this back a little bit and give it a good soak in here. Um, just try and avoid getting the foliage drenched, you know, because obviously fungus spores, you know, but if you've got fungus spores in, in your polytunnel or in your ground, sometimes you just you just can't really do much about it. But they usually, usually, you'll always get some off tomato plants, usually, you know, it's like frost is the biggest sort of killer room. And then this area here, uh, is where the actual plant's going to go. So you can use a trowel or anything really. I'm just going to sort of scrape around. Let's take about an inch. You know, I could just press it down. You know, I thought about I might dust a bit of lime on some of them. I don't know. I haven't got it on me at the moment, but I might do a couple of the other ones. It's just sort of like take a little bit out and this compost has been in here I think it's had about three years growth on it I'm just nestle it down to straighten the edges up a little bit and then uh, fingers crossed there's enough root growth in the bottom of these that is the, the two pot method that when you take the inner pot out it shouldn't leave any or if any compost behind and no way you can see but you know that bottom inch there is no pot there that's just compost that's just matted with uh, roots not root bound and then you just simply pop that in that hole and nestle it down and you push your pot down and get your actual plant and nestle that down and when you water it after I'll water it I'll give it a right good drink from the top you know, because obviously a, a good inch at the top and that'll just help wash all the bits of compost down and sort of get rid of a lot of the air pockets. And that's all you need to do, but I mean, I've got canes on these with supports, you know, which I, I will keep on because I use them for the strings. And I've, got, I've already pre-tied some strings to the top of the polytunnel. Let's try and get them down. Um, it's not the best string, it's just jute twine, but if you're going to use jute twine, Make sure it's a three ply at least because a two ply um, it can be a little bit uh, weak and when you've got a tomato plants in full fruit it can be quite heavy. Um, 
it it can be tricky when they're this size. I like doing them when they're a bit smaller, to be honest, but because you've got to kind of thread it round it to begin it. I tend to just find the cane and then uh, I usually try and tie it to the cane. You know, which is a bit fiddly. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you don't want to be doing it too tight. And make sure you tie it at the bottom. You can just plant this directly down into the, the ground if you want this string. You know, it's a lot of people do that. But I use the cane because if I need a little bit of slack, I can just slide this up rather than trying to extend the string at the top. Just a, a single sort of granny knot. You know, is, is all, all that's really required, and you can you can push that cane down a little bit if you want. I say it's from this point on, it's kind of redundant as a support, and then it's it's just sort of finding the path you want to take and carefully lift some foliage up and begin to uh, wrap your strings round. So it's not about it being tight; it's just there to help take the weight of the tomato plant you know as it as it gets fruit laden it will want to sort of topple and this just helps it so I mean it's it's still quite slight but the beauty of these is you know I can take a bit actually down the plant if I want but also you need a little bit of slack it will tend to bite on the tomato plant so you just need to be careful that it doesn't actually um, cut into it. So it's just a case of watering from the top and uh, continue pinching out your suckers which obviously grow um, in between sort of like a, the, the main stem and the leaf axis that comes off you know um, so you, you sort of find one you know where the stem is so like there's one just there little tiny one they do keep coming back I find you know especially where the seed leaves used to be, you know, unless if you planted yours a bit deeper, which don't worry, you can you can plant your tomato plants as deep as you like. You know, I could probably put this into a big pot and bury it up to here, and it would be fine because all that stem would would end up pumping roots out. Um, like I say, it's just now they're in flower, sort of a feed. You know, once. Probably once a fortnight or once a week if you want, you know, it depends how much you want to feed it. Uh, like I say, just, just keep an eye on things and um, don't worry about things going yellow because that means the lower leaves start going pale, it means that the, the plant doesn't really need them anymore. Once you've got a, a truss of fruit that's set, it's got little baby tomatoes on it, a lot of that lower, fr lower foliage isn't really required. Um, so, plus it helps if you take it off little and often rather than impacting the plant. I don't tend to cut it right up to the stem. I tend to leave it about an inch, which has got a bit of a healing space. Because otherwise, if you cut it too close to the stem, um, it might, uh, any infection you know, or disease might get into the main stem. You know, because you do get stem rot and things like that. That's, that's pretty much all I do. Um, and from this point on, you know, uh, the watering becomes a lot less. You know, you just as long as you can maintain moisture in your bed, you'll be okay because you don't want to let it dry out and then water because uh, if you've got tomatoes on there, it'll make them split. And if, they, if they've gone dry and then they've had a big influx of water, they just they'll just get a big gulp and they tend to split. A uh, bit like carrots, I guess. You know, when you flood carrots out, they they can just split. You, do, you get the odd, as they get over ripe, they'll end up splitting like right? so. You need to keep the picking when they're ready, pick and don't leave them on there. You know, you can leave it a couple on at the bottom so they get like really ripe. Take them off and let them go soft and take your seed from them for next year, that's fine. So, uh, I'll get on with the rest of these. So, you know, it's the same as I've, I've done it every year for the past god knows how many years, and it works really well. And in this, it's a small polytunnel, it's only six foot by ten foot. You know, I, I get a lot of me, all my seedling stuff. Sometimes I, I grow over winter in here and I get 18 tomato plants in here. But because I've got two going down at this end in pots where it's greenhouses, probably, um, that means, you know, um, 20 plants in this polytunnel, which is a lot of tomatoes, you know. Um, but I 
sauce them. I make them into sauce and I've, I've got about nine litres left from last year. So it should just time in about right. You know that you keep picking and then as they start going a bit over right, pop them in a bag in the freezer, just as they are. And then when you've got a big bag full, you know, cook them up, make the sauce. You know, I strain mine to get all the skin and seeds out. Um, so it's a nice smooth sauce and I make it bolognese or anything like that. It's, you can pre-make it all with fresh mints and bang it back in the freezer and you've got a ready meal done and what have you bought? Well, if you've grown your onion and celery and carrots, you've only bought the mints, mate, you know, unless if you've got a flan and you can get yourself a cow, but um yeah, tomatoes are a good good plant to grow. Quite highly rewarding, even if you haven't got a polytunnel, things like Moneymaker and Gardener's Delight do okay outside. You know, um Nipping off time, probably sort of middle of August, the growing tip I'll take out. That signals the end of the growing. And then it's all about any fruit that's on there, get it ripe. Because obviously, you know, when you run out of season, thing, you can cut the plant and hang it upside down. And, you know, sometimes I'll put banana skins in here because they go off a gas that just helps speed, speed the ripening process up. But uh, we'll come to that should the season sort of run a bit short, you know, weather-wise. Right, I'll crack on with the rest of these and then we'll get on with whatever else I'm going to do. That's it, they're all in, all 18. So that's my job done now. Let's just uh, hope for the best. Let the uh, tap some roots in and get going. So I'll give them a bit of chance to root in and then I'll take some of the, uh, there's like some yellowing leaves at the bottom. I ended up putting a little bit of dolomite lime in the bottom of the, uh, the holes before planting just trailed it in only a little bit um, that one was dry as a bone so plenty of wilted leaves down the bottom but it'll be fine as long as I can see some fresh growing stuff on the top uh, they'll be all right so I need to have a tidy up there and I'll probably put some seedlings back in there for now I can put my two tomato plants just in front of it and my courgettes on the floor for now in here uh, so in case of coming into water stuff these will be all right these won't they've been watered and uh, they probably had a good litre and a half each so i should imagine that'll be enough to tide them through until they get some roots into the bed below and i probably don't have to water them now for a you know a good week at least anyway so i'll just i'll bob my head in and just see because i want them to drive the roots down into the uh into the beds now because the beds are plenty moist enough it's a case of clearing up and everything now. So first of all, I have to uh, try and build the shelf. Now I'm kind of in the process of trying to find all the bits. So we'll just uh, make a start on that, I think. Right. Trying to remember how to sort of build this thing up now. I think I've got most of the bits. It's just a bit of guesswork, really. Um, Remember, it's not something that's done all the time. This is just like um, an old curtain pole, this. Just make sure they're about even at each end. Something like something like that. <laughs> Should really try and build this on level ground, but uh Never mind, just to try and rock this over now. I'll get my shelf out of the way. It's just one year, I thought, how can I sort of, you know, put this shelf to use for something. Well, it's kind of not, not been too bad, to be honest. I say I don't have to be out too sturdy. I don't know how well you can see this. Just 
case of fire timber washing line pole. If you didn't slide down and smack me on the head. And uh, kind of roughly sort of line it the way you want it. Kind of goes in there. Big old four inch screw. I won't like tightening them with a hand screwdriver, that'd be uh, beyond boring. That. Slacking that off there, it's a just do the try and slide that along a bit. Yeah, about there. It doesn't have to be like super sturdy, you can do it somewhere, you know, somewhere near you, but I mean, it's, it's sturdy enough for holding veg anyway. A few more screws than that's putting it yet. I'm just going to use the screws that I had in it when it was in the polytunnel. piece of wood that's kind of cut at an angle. It kind of helps brace all the hoops apart. You know, but I'll probably do it with string. Well, like I say, I haven't, I haven't got any. I'll probably have somewhere, but just for now, this will do just fine. There's some holes here. Just from the ceiling. Just screw them until uh, I can just feel them on the other side. I don't want to be oofing a big screw through my finger because uh, it would be quite, quite painful. <laughs> Nearly felt it stab my finger. Just a uh, 25 mil alcohol caffeine. Just put it over them screws. That's all. Yeah, because all you usually do is, uh, I was getting a bit past it, but never mind. Um, the tie bit is string around it, anchor it to there and go around each one and anchor it bottom, you know, to kind of stop them pulling apart, but it'd be fine for this. So it's only a, a temporary thing. All this is for is uh, to help keep the actual end 
from flapping about too much. You want it flicking a lot of water in. This is just a uh, 10 mil plumber's pipe. Maybe that. Then, have to fight with the cover then. Which uh, can be a little tricky. Provided it don't fall to bits. Which is just a case of heavily battened wood. I mean, I have another, I have another timber there that was cable tied to the top. So I bet that'll be it. Yeah, that'll be it. That's handy. Just swing it about everywhere. Clips on the end, so I'm presuming that was, that was where they went at the ends. Not that it's going to hold it up. Uh, I think I've got some cable ties anyway. So I must have upgraded it to, uh, to wood last year. I'll just collapse down at the moment. Just uh, some nail nail clips at the end so just uh, hold it out to get some cable ties now I've gone through a lot of cable ties a year that's for sure it's kind of a bit of a guess to it really what about there Turn that around so I want it poking through the plastic. Yeah, I find a piece of wood actually just to knock something up at the end to keep it all uh, rigid. I'm trying to move that down. Yeah, because if you've got your, you better you cut off your cable tie, it might uh, pierce through your covering. And you can put netting over this. Right, uh, I'll just uh, knock something together for that end. Uh, what have I got? Uh, not a lot. How about that? Yeah, a bit of that'll do. A bit of saw. No precise measurements, it's going to be a thumb it up I think. Yeah, go about there. I'll poke it through a bit. And hopefully it don't split to hell. It might do. Just about cutting my fingers. Screws left as well. So, put the first one through the side there, I think. And screw long enough. Put some other ones here. Should really drill it first, save it splitting, but I bother about a bit of a split. started. Got my 
have rather a screwhead poking out than there. It's a bit, a bit skeevy with, but nobody's marking me on it. There, just kind of stirs it all up a little bit. Probably do with another one at the other end to stop it uh, dropping down. Well, I ain't gonna cut it, it can just dangle down below that. Yeah. Just trying to prop that up there like that. That'll do for that one. About there. I'm going to have to get them back to the camera. long enough well oh, might just go in it a little bit yeah gives it a bit of downward support on that right Got a bit cover now just snip these off at the moment This is just a piece of the leftover polytunnel polythene from years ago. It's done with, I think it's probably that slate pattern each side. Um, you could leave it just like that if you wanted to, I mean the weight of it. I just usually put a bungee cord on it and that holds it down. But, uh, it's just a case of leaving it a little bit. big long screws which will go right through into a leg You could just put like a couple of bungee cords underneath and to hook that down, but it never usually lifts off. If anything, I'll lean a spade against it. But the odd time I've had it sort of get a bit upset, and then when you're gonna get inside it, I just sort of roll the top up and get inside it, then and do what you need to. So, for a shelf, it's kind of fashioned to, to do something else. You put net at the end if you want, you know, to stop anything getting in. That's it, my uh, shelf in the spring turned into a sort of mini polytunnel and then it'll be converted into my uh, onion and garlic drying rack. Well, it's kind of dual purpose. Instead of shoving it out of the way for months, it's kind of put to use 12 months a year, really. Right, so uh, I'm going to find somewhere for supporting this now. 
Oh, so everything's back in here now that's uh, going to come in here. Oh, the uh, four cores yet. Two pickle old tomato plants. I put my cucumbers back in here and the Turk's turbine at the back. Um, so it's just a case of uh, tidying up now. I've got to find home for all the clutter that was in here. I've still got a few uh, plants to put under cover. But I can't, I'll probably put my um, French climbing beans in here actually because they're too tall for the little shell thing, which we'll have a look at now. So I'll try and keep out the wind as much as possible. But, uh, I don't know how well you can see in there. Just turn tilt the camera a bit. But uh, old sweet corn is in there now. It's all covered up. A lot of good water. I don't know how well you can see through the actual cover. Uh, had a bit of a casualty. I dropped a sweet corn plant and it snapped the stem, but hey oh, never mind. So uh, everything's back in there. It's all kind of protected. The spring onions, I've put them in there as well, just down there. But uh, it'll allow a good airflow through and things will sturdy up. Um, just a case of, you know, rolling the side up to water things. Uh, it's a bit of a squeeze getting the shelf in. I don't think it'll harm the peas too much. They're kind of stuck down the back there now. So to get round there, I've got to climb through Kane's paddock. Have a quick look up the top here. So they've had a good pick in. Um, they're due for another pick, actually. Uh, everything's just kind of grown a bit, you know, the spuds. There's a few little tops over there that didn't get nipped by frost, they just kind of got bashed about and I was trying to fleece them up. Onions are uh, chunking up, you know, getting just generally growing, getting a bit bashed about like. Nothing horrendously gone wrong. You know, I've got this other carrot that died, it's coming back now. Um, oh, radish have gone out of there and I've sold another row. Brussels sprouts getting uh, in need of that uh, bigger net putting on now and um, probably start staking I think because they're going to start toppling uh, intend on harvesting some of these probably tomorrow now they have got some uh, you know the spring greens and obviously down there is the uh, little gem cos so everything's kind of doing okay um, Nothing planted in that bed yet, that's just manure that's put on top of there, only about an inch thick. But uh, probably a couple of courgette plants in that. So if courgettes do alright this year, I'm going to be sick of them. Here's the peppers. I have pinched the top out, you know, to uh, kind of make them split, you know, get rid of that first pepper there, you know, down the middle. Um, like I said, I just don't know how they'll get on with this compost of mine, because it's... I mean it's all right like but it's they, they like a more fibrous sort of compost you know a bit like the um like miracle grow a bit like grow bag it's quite coarse but uh it is what it is and we'll just uh we'll just see it's just keeping out for things like aphids because they tend to a bit of a liking to it a bit of distorting going on the leaves here just randomly um but see how it goes some flowers they uh, need a potting on because the roots are spewing out the bottom. So uh, I've got some pots I used to plant the um, subarctic plenty in, which were sort of that diameter but twice the depth. I think they were a two litre. So I might put plant them, you know, out to seed leaves in them. And it'll uh, give me a few more weeks and see the roots at the bottom of that. They can go up to the plot. I've only got room for four of them at the plot, so now I'm there. Seven. So I've got to find home for the other ones. I just need to start clearing up now and then uh, leaks down there probably you know a few more weeks and they'll go out um, I'm not too fussed, there's no rush for them yet because you know, I thinned them all out to another pot uh, I've also got uh, some of the irises have come out but all I'm concerned about is uh, I don't know you can see but this has rust so uh, I'm a bit bit concerned I might have to just lop them off and get rid of them because you know I've got onions here and there'll be leaks going in so I'll just go straight onto them once the blisters start popping uh, Borlotti beans um, growing but a bit slow they need to hurry up and, and get a bit of height on them before the uh, the potatoes block the light out um, 
So they're the uh, swift first earlies. They're getting ready to uh, come out probably the next couple of weeks. Possibly. I don't know. I might leave them a bit. Just see what happens. The tops are still, still growing. There's been no uh, real flowers on them. There's been a couple of little buds I've nipped off, but I've not let anything burst into flower. But um, just see how they go. Uh, nothing else has changed really, things have just grown a bit more, you know, because I think it was only about a week or so ago with the last update. But, uh, I wonder down garden, I'm still in the process of uh, doing this compost video. Um, I need to do that, I'll probably do that tomorrow. But like I say, that's going to be a while before that's uh, uploaded. Because I want to get up to the allotment and do a, an allotment video because it's been a while because you've not actually seen anything since I uh, planted stuff out but you know I've got all this lot to clear up and tidy away so that's a good hour's work there filtering all that away these are sarpon mira potatoes steadily growing away you know um, it's finally come up now there's a few blank spots but I need to get some supports on that so I'll probably just put a couple of posts at this end and then just screw a couple of eyes to the fence and just put a couple of ropes across because they don't seem to be as chaotic the tops on the sarpo mirrors as the king edwards strawberries the frost doesn't seem to have bothered them i've not got any of the uh the bolt you know the black eye on them so looking all right actually quite a few strawberries so they're currently uh French climb beads are just dumped there for now, I'll have to shove them in probably so. But yeah, quite a lot is the way they uh, really dump the strawberries higher than the foliage. Um, I ended up putting uh, some more canes here. When I come back from the allotment and uh, put the canes up there, I had some left, so I thought, oh, bugger it, I'll, uh, I'll erect some here. It'll be a nightmare to harvest, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. You know, some of the French climb beans are looking a bit... Uh, bit sickly looking but they're still still going and all I've done there I've just sown directly the cobra I put two seeds each cane and if they fire great if not I'll start some more off but um, like I say I've got them I've got 24 going down to the plot I think and then there's uh, there's, I think there's another 12 here so plenty of beans even if my peas don't uh, pick up my beans will be all right Sweet peas starting to uh, starting to climb now. I just need to uh, get some juke twine from the plot when I get back up there and uh, get them tied back a bit to uh, help them out. But, you know, I've got all these bits to sort out. Um, cleaned up my uh, my maple the other day. I wanted it look, looking really sickly this year, and I found out it was full of scale. You know, they look a bit like wood lies to be honest, but I've spent ages picking them all off and I scrubbed it and since then it's it's actually perked up in colour because they were just nestling and once I looked closely and it was absolutely covered in them so uh, fingers crossed things will start to rebud now it can get a bit of life through it because they just sap the life out of it but yeah they look a bit like wood louse obviously without the legs they just stick to the branch and they're very small they were covered in aphids these other maple so they've had a spray. But uh, that is about it. Apart from the carrots, they seem to be going okay. They're starting to germinate. The only thing I have seen when I've been picking the radish down the bottom there, I have seen carrot root fly knocking around them carrots. So um, I need to get, a, I've got some environment stuff. I need to pull my finger out and get a get something made probably do it for next year I'm, i'll make a designated carrot area and make a little lid thing that can go on it but uh on that note i think that's about it you know peas down there they're doing okay at the moment so i hope everyone's uh, staying safe and uh take care thanks for subscribing and uh Click the bell icon if you if you like what you what you've watched and uh, you'll get notified whenever I upload a video. You know, obviously there's um, the garden videos, there'll be the odd view, music video as well. Um, so thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.